On today's episode of Should It Be a Mead, we're asking the question, should Sour Patch Watermelon be a mead? Let's get started. All right, so here is the recipe right in front of your face. This is 24 packs of Sour Patch Kid Watermelon, the, the candies, unwrapped. Uh, two pounds of clover honey, about a gallon and a half of water in total, the five grams of lavender 47 because I'm lazy and just going to throw it all in. I'm going to use Fermade K for, um, of course, adding nutrients. So that is, I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon for that in total. Here's what I did. I unwrapped all of that, all those uh, Sour Patch Kids, and, the, and then put them into a bucket. So I then took and put a gallon of water in a pot and put all of the Sour Patch Kids into there. The, I, I got that to a boil, and when I saw that all the Sour Patch Kids had, or Sour Patch Watermelon, excuse me, had um, melted down, I added two pounds of honey to it, and I didn't do it during the boiling process because that would blow off a lot of stuff. So I went ahead and did that. Let that cool, put it into this bucket. This is currently at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. We are in a little bit of a pickle. Let me show you. So I originally started with a gallon of water. Also, I read the wrong thing. This is starting gravity 1.160. Way too high for the starting gravity. We're gonna cut this with a about a half a gallon of water and see what that does to the gravity. One little fun fact about this. So the after the boiling process, there was a weird like, kind of film that had developed on top of this. So I uh, had to scoop that off and I'll show you a picture of that. We're gonna go ahead and stir this up real fast. And then we are going to add our yeast, assuming that this is at a good enough starting gravity. All right, that's a much better starting gravity. 1.0, oh, sorry, 1.114. So much better, much easier place to start for this brew. Uh, that will put us somewhere in the realm of like a 14 and a half ish percent, somewhere around there. I'm very curious what this tastes like before yeast, before anything else. So let's see what, it, what honey and Sour Patch Kid tastes like. Tastes like Sour Patch. It has kind of like a, that, the, a little tartness from the sour sugar in there. The sugar water, that's for sure. Okay, um, so starting gravity 1.114. We're gonna go ahead and just dry pitch our yeast on top. Could have rehydrated them, but I'm being lazy right now. You're welcome. And we're gonna add some Fermade K. Well, actually, we're, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wait to pitch our Fermade K until uh, about 24 hours in, let these yeast kind of wake up, do their thing. Um, will this ferment all the way through? I don't know. Last one of these I did, I made a double bubble mead, which you can find that video on the channel. Um, and we did a, should it be a mead for that? Who knows what's gonna happen with this? I'm gonna put the lid on. We're gonna see if this starts fermenting at all. And then we'll add our Fermade K here in about 24 hours, assuming it does ferment. So here we go. All right, so one thing I did not consider in this was the pH of it. Um, I did not take a test to see what the pH was, but if there was any acidity within it that could have affected the fermentation. Luckily, I did not really see much issue throughout the fermentation. But that is one thing to denote when dealing with candy. There's always a chance that that candy might have some weird pH balance that you might have to buffer with potassium bicarbonate. As you can see here, it is indeed fermenting. We're 24 hours in and it's going. So let's see what happens. It smells pretty interesting. All right, so this is fermenting. You can maybe tell there there's a little bubbles. I mean, it's slow. We're at 1.072-ish, started at 1.114. So we'll see if it keeps going. We're like nine, uh, 10 days into this so far. All right, it's been a month since we started this and I'm pretty sure it's done. I don't see any more bubbling or anything. The starting gravity is 1.114. The current gravity is about 1.038. So, I mean, we've not necessarily burned through a lot of the sugars. I thought I would see more fermentation, but I haven't. Still super, super, super cloudy. Like that thing is as murky as can be. So I don't think this is gonna clear up. 
Let me tell you what it tastes like and then we're gonna rack it into a new container. It smells like Sour Patch Watermelon. I mean, and it's got the sour nose too. That's, that's interesting. That's definitely just straight up Sour Patch Watermelon. It's got the watermelon essence, which is kind of interesting because I very rarely do I get watermelon flavor to pop. It's got that watermelon artificial flavor and some tartness to it from the sugar. But the honey comes in and kind of warms it up. So it's not all tart. It's got some like warmth to it. I mean, it's, it's definitely got some alcohol burn, but it tastes like, I mean, a Sour Patch Watermelon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rack this over. Again, we're only a month in. So let me rack it over and then we'll talk. All right, so not only was there not enough room in this cardboard for more, but there's a fair amount of like weird gunk at the bottom of this that's not your eight typical just yeast. It looks like honestly like part of the gummy side. So I've lost a good portion of this brew, or probably about a quarter gallon to a third of a gallon of the brew, but it's okay. We have plenty, we have one gallon here. So I'm gonna put an airlock on this. We're gonna let it set for a little while longer. And then I do wonder if it'll clear up any, I don't know if it will, but we'll come back and see what we wanna do next. I went ahead and stabilized this just to be safe because I was gonna back sweeten. So this is still at 1.038 gravity and that's fine. It sat for about 48 hours. I moved it into a new container. You can see on the left side of the screen, that's the previous container with all of the extra sediment, stuff that we don't want. So obviously not going to leave that in the brew. Back sweetened with half a pound of clover honey. That brought the final gravity up to 1.050. Let's go to the taste test. All right, here we are for the taste test. I have Mike and Carlos here to help from Texas. They are here to hang out. Carlos's channel is Texas Longhouse Meat, as you can see right here. <laughs> um, and so they're here for the weekend, and we're about to do a fun live stream of things. So glad you guys are here. Thanks. Glad you're Thanks here for this wonderful um, weird mead. This is episode two of Should It Be a Mead? And this is Sour Patch Watermelon. So let me tell you my little recipe. This was a one and a half gallon batch. You can tell that things have happened mm -hmm. since then. Oh, yeah. um, I wish I, I'll, at the, after this, I'll show you a picture of the amount of sediment this had. It was unruly. Mm. This was 24 packs of the Sour Patch Watermelon Ooh. things, yep. candies. One point, or two pounds of honey, which I did not specify which one. I think it was clover honey. Starting gravity was 1.114. And like I said, I'm not gonna tell you where, how far it went, because I think that's gonna be part of this game. Okay. Melted the, those things down, put the honey in, put the water in. Um, I used, what kind of use? I used the Lalvin D47. Okay. And of course, nutrients and things. This thing is about two months old. And uh, let's get to tasting. Tell me what you think. <clears throat> Smells, uh, smells a little boozy on the nose. I don't get any Sour Patch Kids out of it though. <laughs> the watermelon. I got a little bit. Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it actually tastes nothing like it smells. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, the nose on it is just kind of like sugary yeah, brightness like, yeah like a little sugar ethanol type uh-huh that i get in the aftertaste i actually get the i get believe it or not i actually get some watermelon in the aftertaste mm -hmm. yeah it sits in the back of the tongue okay yeah it's, i get it now yeah and the what's interesting is that sugar that sour sugar whatever that that is it kind of pops through a little bit with that mm, acidity yeah. the bite um, I think there. I think that's part of what I get on the nose too. Yeah, I think that's kind of like a little bit of sourness is kind of pushing the uh -huh. alcohol out, and so like at first I get like it smelled like it was gonna burn going down, but it doesn't at all, and I think that's no. from the sour that's mm -hmm. coming through on it. Do you have any guess on? Um, well, so it started at one point one one four. Okay. Um, what do you think this final gravity is? I'm going to go about, because it, it's, it's definitely, 
thick on the tongue, so I'm yeah. go about one one point. I'm gonna go about ten fifty. Okay. Do you have any? I know this is so lower. Ten thirty. You're right on it. Actually, it's ten fifty for this final guy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So like it ended at one point zero three five. Like it just halted. It's like I'm out. And then it was pretty still like tart. It just didn't have a lot of. Uh, I mean, it had sweetness, but it was weird because it wasn't like ten thirty five is. Pretty Very, sweet, yeah, I almost, mean, as is. And I was like, okay, I don't think I need more honey, but it, I think it does. So I added half a pound and brought it up to 1050. So this is arguably one of the sweetest meats I've ever intentionally it, made. But it doesn't, it doesn't, like, the viscosity of it tastes like a sweet meat, yeah. but it doesn't, the sweet, even though for being 1050, it doesn't taste like a yeah, it's not super sweet right. meat. Yeah. Like, you know... It, it put it in competitions, they always say go off of your perception, not the hydrometer. Right. Like this would go into a sweet meat category mm -hmm. and not a dessert meat category. Right. It's, so. it's, it's weird. It's like a funky yeah. thing. So, I guess that begs the question should Sour Patch watermelon be a meat? Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> I like <it. laughs> I, I was thinking to myself if, if you blindfolded me and told me that there was some type of candy in this meat, I feel like I would be able to tell. Yeah. If I, if I really thought about it. I, I don't know. But it, it stayed there in the back of the tongue. I thought it was pretty good, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, hey. Well, you, you heard it here. Um, if you want to make yourself a Sour Patch watermelon <laughs> meat, you can use this recipe that's on the screen and uh, just throw some honey in, throw some water in, and, and let it go. I think it turned out really great. And again, yeah. I'll show that photo to you guys. There's a lot of sediment. That was the weird thing about this. I think the gummy side of Sour Patch like mm -hmm. didn't dissolve all as well i don't know well, that i wonder what kind of well who really knows what's in this stuff, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Not only that, but not your depending on the sugars it's not going to ferment either right so. yeah there's the the sediment itself is very weird looking mm -hmm. and it wasn't like sketchy looking but it was like that's clearly some sort of candy problem mm -hmm. so oh, i will end up bottling this and who knows how this will age? This thing might be terrible in two months. It yeah. might be amazing in a while, but we're gonna, I'll take it off this oxygen um, sitting on top. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, you can look forward to more episodes of this, including a Skittles mead that is coming up very soon, a Starburst mead, um, and many more. So you can comment below with things. Gentlemen, thank you for your help. Thanks for having us. Go check out Carlos's channel. It is Texas Longhouse Mead. It will be down in the description. Go support him and uh, check out all of his great content as well. So, thank you guys for your help. We'll see you next time. <laughs>